Hello traders and welcome to a new video series of mine. In today's video we're going to be talking about Wickoff Market Theory, uh, an intro and a basic guide to how to use it. This was a heavily suggested and voted um, video on my Patreon as you can see here. We had eight people voting for Wickoff, so I know that there's a lot of interest in, uh, in, in talking about this kind of market theory. And for those who don't know what Wickoff theory is before we uh, talk about the challenge, it's a method that you can use when looking at technical analysis and price formations to try to trade like an institution instead of trying to trade like a retail trader. All right, so let's talk about the challenge and then go into Wickoff theory. So the winner of the challenge was Sergeant Crip on Discord. So congratulations, you are the first winner in the price prediction challenge. Uh, you will be awarded the tokens as a result for the price prediction uh, game. And also, uh, many shout outs and, and love to you uh, from our trading community. So, congratulations. This was the chart that he had submitted, assuming it's a he from the uh, Sergeant Crip. Yeah, so what he had predicted was that price was going to go up. This was, this was predicted on uh, Monday, as you can see. He predicted that price was going to go up to here to about 75 to 7,600, right? Previous previous support becoming future resistance. Price did do that, and then price went right back down to around where he had thought that price would be going between Monday and Friday. And he predicted, it looks like, about 66 to 6,700 for uh, support, for price to go boom, and then back to support. And that did happen, sort of. The lowest price that price did go on Bitfinex was 6.5K, but he was the closest um, predictor. So yeah. Congratulations to you, Sergeant Crip, and a nice prediction based on support resistance and technical indicators. Finally, I want to give a special thanks to Brandon, uh, aka at Chop on Discord. He took uh, he took a bullet for the team when um, submissions weren't going through to our a tab on Discord, so everyone just PM'd him their um, price predictions to enter the challenge, and RIP his inbox. So. Uh, Thank you for allowing your inbox to be overflowed with tons of uh, price predictions. Okay, so to begin on Wickoff Market Theory, uh, I wanted just to start this uh, four or five part video series I'm going to be doing on Wickoff with The Art of War. Uh, Art of War by Sun Tzu is probably my favorite book of all time, um, and, that, and that goes without any other books even coming close. Uh, th this was written thousands of years ago by allegedly uh, Sun Tzu or could have been written by a group of Chinese um, scholars or warriors as well. And this really directly applies to how we can think about Wickoff before we start to talk about the technicalities of it. All warfare is based on deception. There is no place where espionage is not used. Offer the enemy bait to lure him. This last line right here is central to how Wickoff market theory works. The market's going to be offering bait quote unquote, to try to get retail traders to emotionally market buy or emotionally market sell. What, why do they want, why do institutions want retail to do this? Well, institutions are going to be using limit orders because limit orders on exchanges are going to be offering no fees or even rebates for uh, large institutions or large smart money traders who, who want to use them. Also, there are many disadvantages for large money, for smart money. Uh, institutions and HFTs to be market ordering or market selling and market buying. If they do do so, they can run into high fees and they can also run into issues of uh, liquidity where they could, you know, like market sell here. And if there's not enough bids, then they could just market sell and just tear through the order book. That is not good because uh, that means that they're going to be selling at progressively worse prices and then price will probably just go right back up because there's la um, the amount of demand in the market is still high enough to keep the price back up to here, so then you might see, you know, move like that. So what they want is to put limit orders, and then they want retail traders to market buy, you know, to, to buy into their sell limit orders, and they want um, retail traders to market sell so they can fill their limit buy orders. So what we're going to be doing with Wickoff Market Theory is looking for spots and price opportunities to find when institutions might be getting into positions. And the really cool thing about Wickoff is that we're actually going to be entering positions before the move even occurs. So the whole central theme to trading into Wickoff market theory is trading into consolidation phases. Uh, we're not trading retracements and we're not really trading into a trend. We don't want to buy into an uptrend or sell into a downtrend. That's what a retail trader would do. 
Uh, instead, we're going to be looking at consolidation, and when certain patterns occur, we can actually buy it almost uh, the, the best price possible, which is going to maximize our gains because we're buying a consolidation, then the price goes up, we capture all of that. And we're going to be limiting our losses if uh, price goes down, we buy, and then price goes down another like you know 1%, it's a small loss. So finally, uh, I think I had already kind of alluded to this, but the second art of war quote is the whole secret lies in confusing the enemy so that he cannot fathom our real intent. Institutions do not want retail traders to have information on the market or to have a good understanding of where the market's going to go. If retail traders did have both of these uh, and were not confused by, by, by the market, then the market would likely just become an efficient market. Uh, and efficient markets can be very hard to trade. Uh, for, for those who, who know efficient market hypothesis, you can look that up on, uh, on Wikipedia. All right, let's talk about Wickoff and just keep these two Art of War quotes in your head. So as I had said, Wickoff market theory is one of the few strategies that you can use to take the smart money mindset instead of trying to trade like a retail money, a retail trader, aka dumb money. Uh, sentiment analysis, looking at order flow, looking at uh, position data on Bitfinex, on uh, margin position data, that is a way that you can try to take the, the uh, smart money mindset, but that doesn't really involve TA. Order flow and sentiment is a different category. This is going to be a type of method that you can use to look at different consolidation phases and then use technical analysis and volume, so just price and volume and that's it, and, uh, and then enter trades that way. So a few things that are central before I want to start on uh, Wickoff market theory. If you haven't seen my uh, video on, I think it's called The Ultimate Guide to Interpreting Volume, I would watch that. Because understanding volume and the fueling of price, as, as, as uh, volume is referred to, is quite central to how Wickoff theory works. So Wickoff, uh, about a thousand, um, not a thousand, about a hundred years ago, Richard Wickoff uh, found that stock that stock prices move in predictable patterns where uh, retail traders were exploited and institutions were um, profited or profitable by exploiting retail traders. This is going to still be holding today and probably in the future as well. And like I had said, the strategy revolves around trading during consolidation with cyclical patterns of supply and demand. All right, so let's go into a little bit deeper into um, Wyckoff market theory. So there are three laws, and I try to just jam them all in here. But there are three central laws that Wickoff takes into account when you're identifying these consolidation moves, so keep these in mind. I don't really want to read all of these out loud because I don't want this video to be like half an hour long. So you can just pause the video here and, and read over uh, a few of these and then, um, yeah, and then unpause and keep going. All right, so now let's talk about the actual technicalities of, of Wickoff market theory. I do want to say that this video is not going to be very technical. Uh, there are very specific patterns to to wake off that are that have many different terms. That's going to be featured in the second uh, in the part two video of my wake off market theory. This video is just going to be an intro and a primer on uh, the type of mindset and the type of trading that you that one would be doing if they were using wake off market theory. So the way that the wake off price cycle works is you get an accumulation phase where many retail traders have sold oversold. And then you get to get a phase called the markup. And markup is also just another term for an uptrend, which is forming out of consolidation. After you get that, you're going to get a, a, a phase where many retail traders have bought into the market and where demand is at its very highest. And when that happens, you're probably going to see a distribution phase. I think uh, I, I pulled this off Google Images, but I think the, the person had misspelled distribution to disk tribution, but you know, teach their own. And then you're going to get a markdown, which is also known as a downtrend, as uh, institutions begin distributing. So one thing I do want to say is when I say oversold and overbought, I'm talking about retail. I'm not talking about institutional. Uh, so that's when dumb money has all sold, and overbought would be when uh, dumb money has all bought. And accumulation is going to be accumulation of institution and, and powerful um, crypto figures. That's when uh, we want to buy it as well, when they buy it. Preferably before they buy in, but uh, that's not always possible. So those are the four stages that you should be thinking of. And then within each of these individual stages here of overbought and oversold, we also have four different types of consolidation that Richard Wickoff had uh, thought of. Accumulation, distribution, reaccumulation, redistribution. Basically just accumulation is when price consolidates after a downtrend and then it acts as a reversal, so then price goes up. Distribution is just the exact opposite 
where price is consolidating after an uptrend and then price begins the downtrend. Reaccumulation is just going to be price goes up, consolidates, continues going up. Typically, more often than not, when price consolidates after a trend, typically it continues the trend. Um, so reaccumulation re and redistribution is going to be slightly, just slightly more often, occurring more often than accumulation and distribution. And then, yeah, finally, redistribution would be when price is consolidating after a strong down move. Uh, and then price will continue that downtrend after that redistribution. So how can you know when price is going to move in a certain direction of um, accumulation or distribution? Well, there are many laws, and, and I, I'd shown the three laws before here. So these three laws are really going to help with identification of when do we want to buy into consolidation, when do we want to sell into consolidation. And the reasoning that, that we're doing all of this is going to be trading like an institution and trading against where many retail traders stop losses might likely be. Because we know that in a price in a, in, a, in a price spot where there are many stop losses of retail, that's going to be a lot of market orders because that's how that's how stop losses operate. When uh, when price goes down, it hits a lot of sell stops. That's going to be a lot of market sell orders that are going to be selling down to bids. And what we want to do is put out our limit orders as if we were an institution, so that those retail traders are going to be market selling to our limit order. That can be kind of risky. Um, so you do have to be very careful when you're trading this strategy to always use a stop loss. Um, because if you instead trade into consolidation that turns into a breakdown and, and uh, not a uh, spring, as it's called, spring where you know springs down and then back up, then you could have some heavy losses quite quickly. So there are five phases of consolidation that, uh, that I was discussing. Uh, dis disgusting, not, not disgusting. Consolidation is not, not disgusting. It's quite interesting. So ignore the PS, uh, SC, AR, the automatic rally, uh, selling climax, preliminary support. We're going to be talking about that more in part two, which is going to be the exact technicalities of, um, of what we see. But this is just, I wanted to show the five phases uh, of how Wickoff theory works when, when you see consolidation occurring. Uh, a, B, C, D, and E. Where we get phase A, which is more just the end of the downtrend. This is for accumulation. The end of the downtrend, phase B is going to be the beginning of consolidation with some moves that might be stopping out retail traders who are trying to buy into this consolidation. You know, maybe they buy here, they put their stop loss here, boom, and then they get uh, hit there. Then finally, uh, consolidation is going to continue typically. And if retail begins to accumulate again, then you might get something called the spring. And the spring is really the optimal buying opportunity. And that's when the, the, the traders who had been stopped out uh, buy back in, probably at not best prices, and put their stop loss below here. Then when price hits their stop losses here, this is when many institutions and smart money are going to be beginning to buy up the, the asset. And then this is where you get uh, the up move the test. So it's really not revealing itself. With using this schematic here, price is really not revealing itself as a strong uptrend. It's really just suddenly moving up here. And at this point, many retail traders still believe that this is going to go down. So they're not buying in. They're not going to be uh, filling only any limit sell orders of, of institutions. And then price is probably going to consolidate at resistance or a little bit above. Retail is probably still going to be convinced that the market's moving down. Then the market breaks out upward. So that's the five phases of consolidation. So now what I want to do is just a few different examples of identification practice. So with this, we're just going to be looking at price and we're just going to be looking at volume. And try not to uh, you know, drill this into your head yet because that's going to be more, you know, like I had said, part two uh, with, with what these mean with the um, backup and, and, you know, and uh, that stuff. So let's look at this example here. This example uh, of the four different kinds of, of, Wyckoff, um, of Wyckoff consolidation, this is either going to be accumulation or redistribution, right? Because uh, price went down, so we know that price is either going to go up, that would be called accumulation, or price is going to go down, that would be called redistribution, because down, consolidation, continues down. So we want to ask ourselves, is price going to go up or down? Well, if we look at a few things that's, that are happening here, okay, so I see the most important thing is what, what occurs when price goes beyond support. Uh, and, and this goes back to here, if you had paused the video, the law of effort. So if you see that price is struggling to move lower and has high volume, this is a sign that this could just be a stop-loss hunt, right? Law of effort uh, part A. 
and then part B might might come into to play to play uh, later. But this this to me, I mean, I have twenty twenty hindsight, but this to me looks to be like accumulation. And the reason being is those this low price tail here and this low price tail here that could have just been a stop loss hunt. Um, and yeah, I see very very high volume, but I don't see price going much much lower. I just see price um, consolidating, or not even consolidating, but springing back upward after a downward spring. So as you can probably expect, this was the absolute best spot to buy. As strange as that seems, this was the beginning of the uptrend that went up uh, much, much higher on Bitfinex. I mean, just the profit here alone for about half a day would be 8.3K 8, 8 up to about uh, 8 point, almost 9K. So this is a really nice profit in a short period of time. It looks kind of funny because the beginning of an uptrend and the beginning of a downtrend is not going to show itself as something that looks, you know, that's like hitting you over the head. This is the beginning of the downtrend or this is the beginning of the uptrend. This to me does not look like the beginning of an uptrend. And that is the whole point of how Wickoff market theory takes the market. It, it makes it so that the types of moves that look like they're going to move one way actually end up moving the other because retail is convinced that market's going to go down. They all market sell to limit buy orders here. That's how it works. All right, let's look at another example here. We see a period of consolidation. We have established support here. We have moderately established resistance here. We are previously in a, in a downtrend as well. Is this accumulation or redistribution? So do we think that this is a spring or do we think that the market is just going to continue moving down? Well, let's look at the facts here. We see very high price momentum and we see very, very high volume moving downward. So with those two factors in conjunction moving past support, this does look quite bearish. This doesn't really look to me like a stop loss hunt. If it was a stop loss hunt, we'd probably get a very, very low price, uh, very, very high price tail like that. Or, you know, but the price will be going, will be going down. Uh, that kind of price tail with that high volume, that is just trapping, uh, you know, retail long positions that might have, uh, retail, that could be stopping out uh, short positions that might have put stop loss above here or above here, boom, hit. Or it could be even a buy stop where, you know, retail traders say, hey, I'm going to put my buy stop here so the price goes here, I enter long, and that could have just hit a lot of them. I don't see a very low price still here. I see strong momentum and it's followed through down here. So, yep, this was the beginning of the downtrend. Uh, price here was at 8.7K, right? So that would be about here. Uh, price did consolidate for a bit, you know, retouched the, uh, the the bottom support here, and then just continued the downtrend much, much lower. So I know I did say you don't want to convince retail that one market move is going to happen, but here's a, here is a bit different because the price momentum was, was quite high and the price volume was quite high as well. Plus, we probably trapped some retail traders up here and potentially here as well. So this kind of setup is telling me that institutions maybe had limit sell orders here, limit sell orders here, uh, potentially limit sell orders in this area too. And then maybe market sold here uh, because they, they were quite confident the price would just you know go lower uh, and price did. So I do want to say uh, one thing on cause and effect. So that's one, that's the second law to wick off theory. So we have cause and effect. So this kind of consolidation is basically the cause and then the trend is called the effect. I put that here. Yeah. So that's what we can refer to when we're talking about these kinds of wick off moves. All right, let's go into the final example here. Okay, so we see consolidation um, and we see Volume-wise, we see high sell volume. Um, I don't want to say sell volume, but we see high volume, and then we see low price tails. We see a low price tail here and a low price tail here. This could potentially be stopping out retail uh, long positions, right? Who might have tried to buy into this, put a stop loss below. This time, let's actually go a little bit more advanced and not just rely on um, these kinds of schematics. Let's let's go to here. So this is either going to be accumulation or this is going to be distribution. So what looks like it would make more sense? Does price look like it's making this kind of formation? Or does price look like it's making this kind of formation? Ignore what happened uh, you know, earlier because that would just be distribution versus redistribution. And ignore what happens here, but just focus on this. So does it look like the market's moving like that? Let's take a look. No, not, not really. I don't really, I don't really see that here. I, I don't see this kind of uh, short stop loss on here, short stop loss on here. 
I don't really see that. I see a slight one here, and then this one does not close above. So I, I wouldn't really say that that occurs. Now let's take a look at accumulation. Do we see this where we have a selling climax, and then we have this, and then we have this? Let's take a look. Yeah, uh, we have a selling climax here, right? Because we have very, very high price momentum, which makes sense. Very, very high price momentum uh, down to here. And then selling comes to a climax here. Slight uh, up move, known as the automatic rally. I, I promise I'm not going to get uh, too, yeah, the, the automatic rally here. I'm not going to get too technical here. That's that's for part two. That's for part two, guys. But um, yeah, and then we get a slight stop loss on here, right? This is going to be stopping out retail. Then finally, we get we get a quick down move that just stops out many, many retail positions here. Uh, and we have high volume with that low price tail, which is a really good sign for price to continue to move upward when you get, uh, you know, price goes down very, very quickly on very, very high volume, and then makes a price tail. If price closed down here, then that would be high momentum, high volume, price would probably go lower. So I would say that looking at this schematic, this looks like it fits pretty well with, um, with, with, the, with, with what actually happened. Yeah, so what did happen? Well, not surprisingly, this is what happened. This was the consolidation move that was actually accumulation as price went from a downtrend into an uptrend. After this consolidation, we had a, a single stop out here to stop out those longs and the second stop out here. Uh, and then price moved very, very high on very high momentum and on very high volume. Uh, this could have been a potential profit about 11.1k up to about 11.6k. And that is going to be it for part one, uh, the intro to Wickoff theory. So we've gone over we've gone over a lot. We've gone over the three laws of, of, of Wickoff market theory. We've gone over why it works and trading like an institution and trading against retail, trying to trade where the stop losses will likely be. And then finally, we looked at some identification pro, um, identification. I call identification practice where we're looking at different kinds of consolidation to try to find if we want to buy or sell into them because uh, that is central to Wickoff theory is not trading the trend like that not trading even retracement but trading before the markup even happens markups when you know uptrend mark down is you know downtrend uh, so this strategy would would be quite good for maximizing risk reward you know putting a stop if you buy here putting a stop loss I'd say like here and then you could, uh, you know, take profit here using a different kind of indication besides wick off. All right, so um, hope you enjoyed the video and have a great day.